हरि ओम तो अच्छा गुरु जी हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओ सो हाउ आर यू आम आई हैव एम इनफ्लेम्ड लेफ्ट नी आई एम गुड my left knee beautiful so so let us all start quite busy nowadays have a lot of work om namah shivaya gurave सच्चिदानंदमूर्त निष्प्रपंचा सतरलंबा तेजसे ओं शंकर शंकराचार्य केशवंबादरायण सूत्रभासत वंदे भगवतपुन पुन ईश्वर गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्यमद्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम सिदक्षिणामूर्त नम ओं गुंगुभ्यो नम ओं गणपत नम ओं ऐं सरस्वत नम ओं क्लीं कलिकाय नम ओं क्लीं भद्रकल नम ओं दम दुर्गाय नम ओम ह्रीम नम शिव सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न शैवागम ऑन द तांत्रिक पर्सपेक्टिव एज ए पार्ट ऑफ दी योग वेदांत कोर्स विच रनिंग सिंस मंथ ऑफ अप्रिल एंड नाउ इट इज आल्सो सो मेने आचार्य दे आर ट्रैवलिंग एंड लाइक प्रज्ञानंद जी बेणु आल्सो स्वामी विश्वरूपानंद जी सो दे आर पुर सम काइंड ऑफ क्लास आर पोस्टपोन but uh, i'll try my best to actually take some classes even saturday sunday not evening but day time as well that is my plan so that we can also schedule and we can adjust so and previously we have been also study शैवागम मेन सूत्र एंड शैवागम यू नो दैट द शैवागम द शिव सूत्र रिवील बाय लॉर्ड शिव द नॉलेज डायरेक्ट कमिंग फ्रॉम द लॉर्ड शिव सो एंड दैट इज कॉल शैवागम एंड ये रागम मींस टू फ्लो सो फ्लो मींस नॉट not to stop not to control so let flow and becoming aware and that is the real tantra tantra means to observe witness and let flow and awareness like lord shiva he meditating eh, all the time he don't do nothing but he observing and aware so therefore lord mahadev always he observe it and among the god and goddess so lord shiva is the incarnation of the compassion so among the all gods and there is another like lord buddha eh? he was incarnation of uh, compassion so very rare people uh, arrive this planet without any selfishness without any self centeredness so among the god you can see only the lord shiva incarnation of uh, compassion like the lord buddha also incarnation of compassion but there are not many gods we never call incarnation of uh, compassion 
<laughs> we not say that so so therefore among the god lord shiva edakala mahadev the great god hmm? great god so therefore everybody love everybody love lord shiva you know that everybody love lord shiva among the all god and goddess because he can forgive he can forget and he remain will be kind to you remain compassionate to you no matter what kind of uh, wrong things you do in your life hmm? still lord shiva is the only god who can always forgive you and let you and let let you to go all the way to atma gyana right so therefore lord shiva when accepting as a disciple he don't have any kind of a intellectual judgments but other god and goddess they will check you so what kind of skills you have what kind of uh, education you have what kind of mind you have so they checking everything but lord shiva he never check what you have he simply accepting you as you are and he guiding you all the way to the atma gyana or the brahma gyana let and merge with him the shiva consciousness <clears throat> so they are four and late we have to achieve this conscious self and return towards towards and this consciousness we must develop within that one day he can merge in shiva loka and when shiva loka may be lost so what Swamiji, you still there? Today seems there are some difficulties, but I'm checking why not uh, working my Wi-Fi. Just for a moment. Yeah, no. <clears throat> Action is good now. You have white bars. Yes, I have uh, I have two connections, even Wi-Fi and Plus. I have my own mobile data, both. <clears throat> It should work. Mm. Okay. So it's good that you see, Lord Shiva always meditating. Among the all God and Goddess, many God and Goddess are speaking too much, but Lord Shiva always silent and meditate. Right? <laughs> He can check many God and Goddess, <clears throat> like Lord Buddha. He got uh, all kind of knowledge by meditating. You see, among the all Gods, nobody meditating like Lord Buddha or like Lord Shiva. You see that? Among the, you can take all pictures. so they have so many activities <clears throat> so when i meditate myself always watch lord shiva or the lord buddha because among the all god and goddess you see this is the both gods that are always meditate so it seems so lord buddha there was many gods coming but we never say incarnation of compassion so therefore we can understand now the more you meditate the more you silent the more you observe the more you are gyana then you are become atmananda right atmananda then you are bliss in atman but no meditation atmananda 
Atmananda. So it's good to read, it's good to study, it's good to listen, but at the same time, we have to not postpone our meditations. So therefore, I feel very fortunate <clears throat> doing Panchagni some uh, months. So it gave me so much opportunity to be silent, to observe. And I feel very blessed. I feel very blessed by the grace of Lord Shiva. And especially Lord Son. So these are for me as a blessings. Mm, blessings. No matter how much I have problems, physical, mental, emotional, but I never postpone Panchayagini except rain, except weather is there is rain. And I never, <clears throat> I was never sick like a fever. Even sometimes I feel uncomfortable and fever, but still I'm good. So what I mean here, in six years, I never have any kind of sickness. Although there is sickness, mentally, emotionally, but I carry on. So what I mean here, so when you are dedicated to Lord Shiva, and you must know that, Sean also, Sean Surya Dev, that is another form of Rudra form of Lord Shiva as well. Mm, as well. So Lord Surya reprints as also Lord Shiva in different forms. But sometimes we say Surya Dev is the Lord Narayan. Whatever. <clears throat> so we have to be very clear when you study Shiva Sutra, Saiva Agama. So we must trust the unknown to the Shiva consciousness. And if you dedicate to Lord Shiva or the Shiva consciousness, so naturally, one day, today or tomorrow or next life, <laughs> so you are entering into the kingdom of Shiva. Right, Vidyanand? <clears throat> so Vidyanand means bliss in Vidya, bliss in wisdom. Not only listening, Listening is knowledge, but you must meditate, get this vidya, the pure vidya, the pure wisdom, and that leads to the bliss and happiness. So the Saivagama, so, <clears throat> so therefore I put a little bit, it can go to the Vedanta, it can also go to the Tantra. Depends which perspectives you are checking out. So long time before we study Saivagama, <coughs> Chaitanam Atma, <coughs> the first sutra, Chaitanam Atma, hmm? Chaitanam Atma, so Atma is the pure consciousness. So what is Atma? What we are, we are the pure consciousness. We are the pure Atma, nothing else. So that is the the first sutra of the Shiva Sutra of the Saivagam. Long time before, I also speak about to, many things about the Saivagam. But what I work out in Saivagam, one need to have a constant and continuous dedication and constant practice. Of course, we are listening with the many masters, but especially the Saivagama, continuity practice. Although Lord Shiva, he is very much compassion towards his devotees or towards his disciples. But another is very interesting things. Lord Shiva can testing you also as well. And if you cross that exemption or pass that exemption, so then you can enter into Shiva. So Lord Shiva will taste to lot. <laughs> taste to lot. Like Sankaracharya, 
even tested by the lord shiva in varanasi hmm? so you can see that adiguru shankaracharya is a great master and great scholar even not only that he was himself incarnation of lord shiva or i can even people call he is the incarnation of narayan whatever even a great master great guru a great atmagyani advaita even he could not recognize lord shiva <laughs> he could not notice you see how lord shiva testing to his the disciples so what i mean here so even you have so much knowledge intellectually or the shastras still will not recognize lord shiva am i clear that even adiguru sankarachari he not uh, oh is my lord shiva so what i mean you understand me in varanasi now you can listen you can hear me the voice without video yes it's okay no <clears throat> because i i don't know today anyway so without video you can listen right atmanan is more clear it's better yes okay so let's stop video for a time being but someone can listen at least one photo is enough no no we can have it atmanan hmm huh? one photo is okay okay not me maybe uh, our connection here weak so your connection is good so we can open the video so what i mean here so chaitanya mahatma mm, so lord shiva <coughs> reveal the past knowledge and aim of the shiva sutra to attain the wisdom of atmagyana so that is the main aspects the main theme the aim and objectives but for that we must go through certain methods certain techniques so so that and we can reach and we can realize and we can attain the atmagyana or the brahmagyana but today i would like to go through new sutras i don't know how many sutras last time i gone but uh, atmanam how many sutras last time we gone oh yeah. i have to check out the old... do you remember anything um chitanya mahatma gyanam banda yoni varga kala shariram gyanam gishtanam matrika uttamo berabaha we we went past uttamo berabaha now i'm going to throw sutra number 12 yes 13 i read 13 on atmanand can you hear me i can hear can you hear me okay it's on december 13 yes december 13 sutra 13 sutra 12 okay so i would like to repeat today sutra number 12 bismaya yoga bhumikaha bismaya yoga bhumikaha bismaya bisma means wonderful fascinating yoga bhumikaha the stations yoga stations of yoga constitute a fascinating wonder 
So, Vismaya, Yoga Bhumikaha, the stations and stages of yoga is a, the translation, this is station and stages of yoga constitute a fascinating wonder. What does that mean? Vismaya, uh, the stages of yoga constitutes a fascinating wonder. That is how the translation they tried. But let us tell go. Bismaya, wondering. Stages of yoga, it means one can experience some kind of myth. So what happening? Some things to experience, something extraordinary. Even so, there is a pleasant surprise for the great yogi who notice in mute wonder I hope <laughs> today I'm laughing now. So I hope uh, everything will be good now. Yes, your, your bars is like a wave. It's a red, yellow, white, ye red, yellow, yellow, white. When you're red, you're gone. When you're white, you're back. Now it's white. <laughs> yes. Our astronomer, our astronomer is before red, now it's white. Now it's red. So, <laughs> yeah, continue if you can. Yes, I'm here to continue, sir. So, when you are practicing yoga, you'll have different kind of experiences. So, what kind of experiences you have? The first thing, they say that the two things are there. When you start yoga, you start with the Maladhar chakra. But another thing they call Ajna or the Bindu. So, and it's very interesting that so one can have extraordinary experiences in the Ajna chakra once the awakening Kundalini takes place. So, this is that thing when you are going to experience eye consciousness, the Shiva. But will be more clear why say this are Bismayaha. Say, Bismayaha Yoga Bhumikaha. So, when you practice yoga, you are going to get extraordinary experience, the miracles, the, the mystic. They say, and I try to a little bit go through commentary, then we can understand better also. As a person is struck with wonder by seeing something extraordinary, even so there is a pleasant surprise for the great yogi who notices in mute wonder and expansion of his entire complex of the senses as they come fully under the influence of the inner self, which is mass of consciousness and full of unique, preeminent and ever new delight of eye consciousness, which blossoms forth in the experience of the various objects of perfection, perception. The yogi has this experience in himself that is full of uninterrupted joy, a joy with which he never feels satis eh, satiated. This fascinating wonder betokens the various stations and stages of yoga, which means communion with the highest reality. When you practice yoga, so naturally we are going to communion or the union with the higher consciousness or the correspondence with the cosmic consciousness. 
at that time you are so many things going to experience and that club bismaya this means something you not expect and surprised because many things when you going to experience beyond mind matter and phenomenon is something extraordinary consciousness that club bismaya right so that is the main aim you have to understand it so different stages of the yoga <clears throat> the fascinating wonder be tokens the various such stations and stages of yoga which means communion with the highest reality these are the definite stations indicative of the resp- repose of the yogi in the higher consciousness being the power of his ascent to the higher reality not experience which one may notice in muladhara chakra or the psychic centers but between the eyebrow centers same idea has been expressed the kulayukti in the following words so what happens you are not going to experience in your muladhar chakra right not the extraordinary extraordinary experience or the mixed mystic experience one may experience when the traveling from muladhar chakra to the agnya chakra so these are the stages of the experience in muladhar chakra swadhisthana manipur anahat bisudhi and agnya so a practitioner a yogi can experience in different dimensions of the consciousness once they reach also the higher consciousness or that you can call shiva consciousness then when aspirants realize the self by themselves then the self experience is a pleasant surprise within itself you see aspirant is sadhaka a yogi who realize the self by themselves the self experience a pleasant surprise within itself anyway and when you are going to have the atma gyana once you experience yourself and same time and you are direct communication direct communion direct union with the shiva consciousness so naturally you will have so many pleasant experiences and mystic experiences the same idea has also been expressed in following words in the spanda karika they speak about different and uh, uh, comments how can there be a raised transmigratory existence for him who observing his self as the presiding power over everything avoids full of pleasant surprise so again they note they say that and it is between agnya and muladhar chakras but only can experience the bismaya only can surprise only can experience something you are wondering how it happens that wondering means something you are not going to express through your senses that is extraordinary experiences not that experience not merely intellectual but is totally beyond mind matter and phenomenons <clears throat> then and that they call it i consciousness that means shiva consciousness so when you awaken to the muladhar chakra and reach to the higher consciousness and communicate or communion with the shiva consciousness so naturally you will have the all kind of uh, experiences will be extraordinary or mystic or bismaya <clears throat> but that comes not only today or tomorrow <laughs> when you actually over mastery of your different chakras muladhara chakra or swadhisthana or manipura or anahat chakras and higher consciousness or higher chakras so this kind of experience is may not happen with every aspirants unless until they are awakening the totality of the chakras right so this is the sutra number 12 it is reminding the aspirants and you must awaken the kundalini from muladhara chakra to all the way to reach to sahasra or the agnya chakra then naturally you can have the extraordinary experiences then sutra number 13 so sutra number 13 comes
They say, Icha, Icha Sakti Uttama Kumari, Icha Sakti Uma Kumari. That already we studied also before. Icha Sakti Uma Kumari, Icha Sakti Uma Kumari. That also we study. Icha, the willpower. Uma, the light or the splendor of Shiva. Uma is the wife of a <laughs> Lord Shiva. They say Uma is the light of Shiva. And Lakshmi. Ma means here, means Lakshmi. And U means Shiva. Uma. And vertical U. Woman Shiva, Ma means Lakshmi, or woman also. Woman is they call Shiva. <laughs> Uma, they ride fast more than call U or the Shiva. Kumari, the virgin goddess, the willpower of the yogi who is communion with Shiva is Uma. So it means, <clears throat> I think I have been explaining that before. So willpower is a, itself the uma hmm? icha sakti icha sakti icha sakti icha sakti uma kumari so yogi who realize shiva through the willpower and willpower is nothing but willpower is the lights of a <coughs> lord shiva so, the willpower of a yogi who is communion with Shiva is Uma, who is Kumari. So now we are clear, and without awakening the Kundalini, a person cannot uh, realize, cannot attain the Shiva consciousness. So awakening Kundalini is the willpower, is Asakti, and that the light of the Shiva as well. But here, if I understand correctly, the Uma is not a separation from the Shiva. Eh? The Sakti is not separation from the Shiva. And without uh, awakening of the Kundalini, without Sakti, there is no attainment of the Shiva consciousness. Am I clear this? Hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so therefore, the willpower of a, it, it means, so we can say that, so without grace, without willpower of the Shiva, so there is no awakening Kundalini, ultimately, right? But if you check in Dvaita, a little bit in dualism way, we say Shiva and Sakti. But Sakti is not separation from Shiva. Right? But sometimes we say that maybe Sakti is separate. Shiva is separate. Actually not. So Sakti is actually not separation from the Shiva. Hmm? Not separation from the Shiva at all. So therefore, so Kundalini energy is nothing but the Sakti. But Sakti is nothing but willpower of the Shiva. So we can be very clear now. So without grace of Shiva, nothing can be happen. <laughs> huh? Am I clear that now? So ultimately, in a uh, ultimately the in the Shaivism, so Shiva is the supreme. Huh? Shiva is the supreme. Without Shiva consciousness, so there is no proper awakening. And that is the that is there is no proper awakening of the Kundalini. And without awakening Kundalini, there is no extraordinary experiences. Oh, there is no way to understand ourselves. There is no way to understand the Shiva consciousness. Am I clear now? So so we can call this Lord Shiva the Supreme. <laughs> We sometimes say Sakti the Supreme without grace of a mother 
and without grace of sakti and we can awaken kundalini but here topic comes so without grace of shiva there is no awakening of the kundalini as well this is sutta number 13 it's a icha sakti uma kumari so a yogi who realize shiva and that need also wish of lord shiva so without to grace of shiva a yogi a aspirant not going to realize the shiva consciousness very interesting <laughs> very interesting so we can say that sakti is the light of shiva eh? light of shiva so one we can call light of shiva or the shadow of shiva but here we have to speak positive perspectives so sakti eh, the mother dhuma is the light of shiva and through that light and we can see the shiva that means the light is the vidya so vidya the awakening kundalini is an instrument and is a medium in order to experience extraordinary experiences means the shiva consciousness so we can say that lord shiva itself extraordinary right <laughs> the supreme and absolute consciousness so lord shiva is not ordinary but extraordinary the supreme consciousness then we have to go a little bit the commentary and last time also i speak the will power of the yogi the yogi naha Yoginaha Paravha Paravhairavatam Sama Parnasya Yaitha Sasakte Roma Pairava Pairava Para Miswari Satantreta Rupa Satwa Kumari Biswa Sarega Sahara Kida Para Kumara Kridayam Ite Patan. They say the willpower of the yogi who has reached the statue of the highest Bhairava is Uma. Another is they say the willpower is also the Bhairava, and that is called Uma. Hmm? The highest uh, when we are going to realize the higher consciousness, a yogi who reach who has reached the statue of the highest Bhairava is Uma. So Uma itself the Bhairava. That what to study Vigyanavara Tantra. Then the highest uh, Swatantra Sakti of the Lord. The Sakti is Kumari. So you understand Kumari is the virgin. Sakti is the Kumari. The intent of the play manifestation, manifesting the universe and withdrawing it within herself. The interpretation is based on the root Kumara of the Unadi class Kumar, meaning to play. So there is many commentaries. <laughs> so it's very interesting that so Uma itself the highest Vairava actually why they speak about to U Ma Ma means actually Shakti and U means Shiva so Uma so it means Uma, we call mother, normal translations. Uma is the wife of Shiva. So it means Shakti. Without Shiva, there is will be not exist. And without no Shakti, Shiva will be not recognized. You see, this sutra says that the willpower of Shiva is the Shakti. And without the Shakti, one will be not attain the Shiva consciousness. Hmm? <clears throat> so, yes. I'm just thinking, when I'm speaking this, I'm thinking, I cannot speak only intellectually. I need to think, it's very interesting that we say 
Sometimes we say Sakti is separate. Shiva is separate. But here the topic of Sutra number 13, actually Sakti is not separation from Shiva. <laughs> because that is the light of Shiva. Willpower of Shiva is the Sakti. So it is clear that Shri is actually no separations at all from the Shiva. So we have to clear this. And when we are going to realize ourselves, then ultimately you are going to experience that Shiva consciousness. And that the between the gap you have, that moment you are going to have a lot of extraordinary experiences. So this extraordinary consciousness, a aspirant only can realize. So it means, again, so this is not available in Shastras. Um, once, you once you realize the Atma and you are going to experience your consciousness, that no one can really explain intellectually or sensually or any forms. Only a aspirant, a yogi, can experience itself and that is called mystic so therefore each yogi who experience your consciousness they remain mystic as well so sometimes say mystic yogi eh? siddha yogi siddha guru so we call it like that like sometimes when i'm sitting in a uh, panchagni sometimes people come and tell oh you see the guruji and uh, Swami Samarpanji, now he's like mystic yogi sitting in the middle of fire. How is possible? So he must be and experience so much bliss eh, in a Shiva consciousness. Everybody wondering this. It's very interesting that for me also to hear from others. It's very they to can, hear. They can see you? Can they see you when you uh, make pan Panchagni? They see you or? Yes, yeah, sometimes people come to visit me. And they see I'm meditating, and uh, people think I'm in the in the Shiva Loka somewhere, not here sitting in the physical body. So that is how people, you know, intellectually they think intellectually because they never sit down there. So in India we have so much uh, uh, impressions, so much impressions. Like Lord Buddha sitting under a tree, we think he's enlightenment. He's traveling a different world, right? Okay, please. <coughs> Bidanan. Swamiji, uh, namaste. Um, I would like to ask about uh, why uh, next sutra uh, try to back uh, us to reality. Drishyam shariram. Any visible object is a body. Why uh, that sutra um, would like to um, back us to reality? Next sutra. You speak about the sutra number 14, right? Right, Swamiji. But still, I'm not there. I'm speaking about 13. So let we can jump to sutra number 14. So sutra number particular drishya, drishyam sariram. So <clears throat> drishya means actually here they translate drishyam all phenomena. There is a means phenomenon. Phenomenon is something extraordinary experiences. Then it says a sariram. So they say that objective phenomena, outer, inner, are like his own body. So very what they say, what they speak about drisam sariram, when a yogi meditating and when a yogi experiencing itself is not only limited. It's not limited. That's why they say that drisam sariram one may have the experience, external experience not within the body, is also without the body. One can experience within and without. Right? Drishyam Sariram. So one can experience within 
the body, but without also the body. Because extraordinary experiences not happening within the body. You can leave the body also. That's why they say that all objective phenomena, outer or inner, are like his own body. But another experience, they say whatever, whatever a person experiences in and out, but again, they say that is his own body. But that I have to be a little clarify more further. Not clear now. Just wait. <laughs> wait. <clears throat> they say whatever is a perceptible, whether inwardly or outwardly, all that appears to this yogi like his own body, identical with himself, not as something different from him. This is so because of his great accomplishment of identity with the universal consciousness. His feeling is, I am this, just as the feeling of Sadasi. With regard to the entire universe is, I am this. So you have to be very clear. When we experience Atma, either within your body, but that is not something different from the Shiva consciousness. So, it's called Drishyam Sarira. So, whatever you experience within yourself, that is not something different from the Shiva consciousness is equal. You understand me? The Shiva consciousness and you are the experience within yourself, I am Atma. This Atma is not separation from the Shiva consciousness. So that you have to be they call Drishyam Sariram. Am I clear? That is not separate. What you experience within yourself, same thing also you experience in the higher consciousness as well. So there is no dualism. There is no duality. So that you can also add, I am this. Again, they go into second. To the yogi, the body appears as an objective perceptible phenomenon like blue, etc. Not like perceiver as in the case of ignorance empirical beings. Where that body is in the form of a deha or the physical body is a working consciousness or in the form of a dhi or the mind as a dream or prana as in deep sleep or sunya, or mere void, in case of sunya, pramata. So in the body, and in everything external, his awareness is one of undifferentiated consciousness, and the plasma of the pickup, egg, is undifferentiated plasma. As has been said in a Vigyana Bhairava, just as waves are modes of water, sparks are fire, Lights of the sun, even so the various modes of the universe have gone out of me, Bhairava. The same idea has been expressed in the following lines of Aspandakarika. The experience, the experience himself continues in the form of object, of experience always and everywhere. So what you try to understand, Drishyam Sariram, another is very interesting, Drishyam Sariram means what you experience, Atma is no separation from the Shiva consciousness, because this Atma and a part and parcel of the Shiva consciousness. There is no separation. So there is no different. And you are nothing, whatever experience yourself and you remain, you are experiencing the Shiva consciousness. So that is the Drishyam Sariram. No separations. Because what you are, what you are experiencing Atma. So this consciousness is the like you say, Om Purnamadaha, everything coming from Purnamada, everything coming from Absolute. And you are the you are the part of the Absolute as well. And you are experiencing Atma, this Atma merged with the Shiva, means Brahman, the Absolute Conscious, you are become the full of the consciousness, the Absolute Consciousness. So whatever you are experiencing, Atma, the pure conscious, that is called also Shiva consciousness. You are not a separation from the Shiva. So they call it Drishyam, Shariram, and that may be, seems like a phenomenon, like mystic, hmm? mystic, that is called Bismaya. So continuity of this study. 
Am I clear this or not so much? Then Atmanan. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, I understand perfectly. I also um, so many um, parallels. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, to other scriptures, which also be uh -huh. Shiva, when you were saying without Shakti, Shiva cannot be recognized. This is also part of the Mahanirvana Tantra. And when you said Uma is the light of Shiva, this is part of the Uma Samhita in the Shiva Purana. Very interesting. I never go so far. Very nice you study. Thank you for helping me. But I not study this, but I speak uh, uh, how I understand it. I don't read all these things, but uh, I try to get the meaning. You understand me? Yes, please. If I would... Because I try to, I try to read the Sanskrit mm. and I try to understand myself past what I'm going to speak with you. But I never been all this commentary. But uh, maybe I need to... I don't have time to study all these things, but thank you for helping me. What I already speak is nice to quote. Eh? Yeah. This Marne Bhan Tantra, this Uma Sangeeta is very interesting. Thank you. So it's good you can write the books. What I'm uh, what I'm giving lectures, it could be nice sometimes. You could write it actually in English and German as well in the future. Would be nice some kind of uh, homework. Ah, uh, yeah. I I wrote of course, down, so here my of course, Atman, yeah, of course, Atmananda, you have so many work in your personal life. You have so much work, you have so much economic and finance difficulties. But sometimes it's nice to and write and uh, do some kind of a contribution to the rishis, to the sadhus. So this all our knowledge is the rishis. This is not our property. Mm -hmm. So if you write sometimes in English and Germany, maybe some people can get benefit. Is not it? Ah, uh, yes. I'm just thinking, maybe in the future, but you can collect and something can be write the books, because I don't have right time to write the books, mm. normally. But uh, whatever I'm speaking, speaking most of the time is the natural flow, natural comments. Mm. Most of the time, I don't actually uh, read the all kind of uh, comments on the books. So unless I give you example which is not available any comments, right? I right. give some examples. And when you're initiated, you're subject to your uh, guru's wishes and your guru tells you what you read. And so I'm initiated so far. I'm not sannyasin, I'm free agent and I choose the works I like to study. And I you know it's like to pick up the Bible. People have problems to pick up the Bible and then oh, I find so much relief. I picked up and, and they just found the word open the Bible and just find the word that they need. And it's to me, I have, everybody got many books. I, I throw all my books away and only keep the scriptures. And these are the Puranas. Purana is one of the thousand names of Shiva. Purana is the name of Shiva, a form of Shiva. And Vishnu gave the form to Shiva because Shiva has no form, he is a lingam. So, and it's to me also like this, uh, when I see something within the scriptures, it's to me, it's like Shiva has shown it to me. And then my problem is, this is small, very small. I cannot use this for reading. I cannot use this for chanting. Then the way I learn is I type them off. I magnify the letters so I can read them. And then I use them for chanting. That's how I do, that's how I study. This is all many steps into one progress. I, I write and so I learn and I learn Sanskrit. Now I, I know more words than I knew two years before when I started learning Sanskrit. And to you gurus, because many words in the dictionary, 
this, uh, the dictionary, Sanskrit dictionaries are for the peasant people, for the ordinary people. And they don't write um, the mystic words in the translation. They, they just uh, give the ordinary words so the, the normal people can understand. But um, if you're a yogi, the, uh, yes, the dictionaries are for ordinary people, not for yogis, not only for yogis. So that's why the translations are just um, normal. And then I ask you or some one of you gurus then give an explanation and say, ah, okay, that's now ma makes more sense. And when you ask me like with the sutra number 14 here, if I would um, explain this to my yoga students, it's like the experience, the gross experience, like this is paper, you can touch it, bang it in your head or something like this. And then the subtle experience, you have to give this, this the job as, of the yoga teacher. This is my job, your jobs as yoga teacher. We have to give this to our students. First, they come back, they give us money and we want to make them happy because they have problems. Because people who have no problems don't study yoga. <laughs> <laughs> so that means we have some problems. Therefore, I come to yogic life, right? Yeah. Because I said, I cannot teach yoga to Filipinos because they're laughing all the time. They're all the time happy. And, they, and it's, uh, it, I show yoga, why, what for? I'm happy. I'm already happy. I don't need yoga. Yeah, it's, it's, and I said this to uh, Swami Atmarupa in Cleveland, Ohio. And I, oh, I write this down. This is interesting. What I said. <laughs> Very interesting that. So anyway, thank you, Atman, and you have uh, actually you are a good scholar now. So I'm not good scholar, but always uh, I go directly. Even I don't have time to read the, any books nowadays. I'm fully occupied. After a silence broken, I have a lot of work in the ashram. So somehow, by the grace of Shiva, by the grace of gurus. I feel very blessed, very blessed, very blessed. And the Sri Vidya Guru, he also came to ashram and he gave blessings. And the who also uh, recently I got the, uh, the tradition of sannyasa. I retook also the traditional rituals. I got the, uh, because I took sannyasa before, now I did the sannyasa. So traditionally I got a certificate. So I got also sannyasa. So traditional way. So I have two kind of uh, uh, traditional rituals performed. And that is now, I no need and uh, any approval from Bihar School of Yoga give to sannyas, officially. And this Guru is also, he give me permission. Yes, also you can give sannyas as well in future. So I got full blessings, full blessings. And you see that now you can perform special rituals, like Biraza Homa. Birza home means I never did that before, but every guru have their rights to give sannyas. But I love to have the birza homa traditionally. So this ritual is done in the uh, here in the Hariyarpi traditional ashram. Only they'll give the man, not they never give sannyas to any ladies. Only man, the Brahmin and the warriors. But now they add also Baisya. but Sudra they never give. We have three castes they giving the sannyas. And I certified this and uh, night at two o'clock and we went to Ganga and take the deep bath. And then we have to take out all the cloth and we have to bank up Ganga. We have to and run towards the Himalaya, the northern directions to be naked, completely nude. You have no cloth in night time, two o'clock. So three o'clock, like two thirty, three o'clock. So then we got the again, Guru can call us, hey, please come, don't go so far. Then we are coming, then you take the, and again, so that is the take the orange class. So this is the kind of rituals to be done. Then we have to offer, like somebody died, the forefathers, long, long time. So we have to offer kind of pindadana. So this is a special rituals. So we are offering all things to our forefathers. Even our own, like somebody died, you perform the rituals. But we also perform our own rituals, like your death. So no more physical body. 
so that is special rituals done so i was kind of fasting that day more than 24 hours like that is very interesting and uh, we done 10 people so now so and i don't need any approval from the hair school of yoga as mission no need and evening and uh, even i keep it some niranjan as a guru and that written also who is will be guru i can also who is give you now rituals he can be guru as well but he is free he say and i keep it so you know remain is guru but i have another acharya of the sanyas so he authorized me also i can give the sanyas as well. so i can call any acharyas so it's very interesting but uh, guru swami niranjan he give me a lot of things so i don't want um, change i can put the name of swami sivananda and others but i did not change it so he will remain the guru but i don't need their permissions at all so officially i am free now as institutions we are school of i am free now so it is very interesting and the guru who actually initiated into uh, sanyas the rituals don is a big master big guru also he came to our ashram and blessings in panchagni sibalingam so i feel very blessed the last uh, since uh, and uh, getting out of the panchagni silent since past of me super blessings are ashram full of sadhus and uh, the guru who give the sakti path and uh, in sri vidya also he have two gurus one is uh, sri vidya he have it and he have also sakti path another guru who is uh, giving his uh, sri vidya they all are coming to visit masters and another guru he coming from long way lucknow he gives sanya also he visited it was one hour two hours like this so very interesting that and this kind of gurus they never travel to any ashrams they never go to other ashrams never get bandara nothing but i feel very 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 blessed even i can't express with words how much blessings i have today blessings our ashram also fully i feel like liberated now and i call guru swami niranjan we have so he said that one day i'll visit him visit me so listen but now i'm free more and um, a long time lot of emotions and all these things and i feel lot of lighter my head my body my soul many things are changes now not only that and today they start also our sri vidya temple and with four month uh, they postpone not to work and today they starting also to work so you see the grace of shiva the grace of sakti everything smoothly happening and he did not want to work he took the money and run away so i called the police the chief of the police so they he tried to afraid chief of the police the province not not local police i don't call them he has so much afraid and today everything is smooth many things are going on and uh, and then not only that in our ashram we have three lady teacher now all indians so they running one is running meditation class another running the uh, asan class afternoon morning asan class i only teach philosophy and one swami also he take so fortunately we have a three lady teacher no teacher like sagar no kapil they gone so there are no more in ashrams i feel another blessings three lady teachers first time happening in our ashram and they are very disciplined and they are all are young one is 27 another is 22 another is around maybe 30 or something like that. all are young they running the all classes so our ashram full blessing of sri vidya mataji and mother is arrived everything smooth going on no man teacher anymore so it is very interesting that gone miss kapil ji and uh, currently i'm cooking also the worker is gone so we can see that you see so now all lady teachers very interesting so i will also sending a video in a clips when the teaching is three lady teachers sorry very interesting and there is many teachers also came another also many teachers come then i don't allow but i was select and there are uh, no uh, like no smoking and this and that many things <clears throat> so going on so smooth now so many things are smooth but except our staff we don't have staff we have three students now in the ashram and they also helping me to cleaning and cooking and many things so we see what i am speaking to you how the grace of shiva how the grace of divine mother how the great of grace of sakti is very important we must dedicate 
and we must trust to the and to the lord shiva so lord shiva always testing us i have been so many difficulties this year so many difficulties that you know all of you but by the grace of shiva many things happening the smooth many things happening smooth so by the grace of also parasakti and i feel many things are changes for me and many things coming in the right tracks all things falling into so positive even as so surprised so surprised so this all are happening and by the grace of shiva and surya dev and mother divine mother so that i try to speak with you and share with you through a lot of examples giving you is a part of topic also so this topic you have to learn how to dedicate how to surrender and how to add love to the unconsciousness the shiva consciousness and i am pretty sure and very sure and one should dedicate to lord shiva no doubt and due to his will power the mother the uma and uh, shakti will awaken within yourself and all the way and you are going to experience that consciousness within yourself and without yourself because you are not separation from the shiva ha uh, so that called drishya ha uh, shariram you are not separation from your body you are not separation from yourself so you are the shiva consciousness you are the shiva so that no difference shiva and you so that is very interesting and that is the also tantric perspectives as well and vedantic perspective as well vedant means no separations and tantra means here you are not separation from shiva everything is shiva eh? everything is the shiva so without the grace of shiva nothing can happens even the awakening kundali not takes place that today we have to be very clear not without shakti but without shiva would imagine without shiva without will power of shiva there is no awakening of this shakti that means shakti has no power and shakti is no separation from shiva so this is the conclusion of today thank you om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti शांति शांति ओम गुरुभ्यो नमः हरे हे ओम शिवोहम 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 परमात्मा शिवोहम शिवोहम अमरात्मा शिवोहम 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 ओम नमः शिवाय थैंक यू